Hi, Eason here, and welcome to Movie Friday, where I talk about movies that you might want to consider adding to your watch list or avoiding for your Friday evening, Saturday evening, or just weekend in general. This week, I will be talking about director John Dowdle's The Poughkeepsie Tapes. The Poughkeepsie Tapes is a mockumentary-style horror movie directed by John Eric Dowdle, whom you may know from such titles as the Wreck remake, Quarantine, or the M. Night Shyamalan written Devil. Not really impressive there, but he did also direct the found footage extravaganza that was As Above, So Below. Is a really good movie, by the way. You should consider watching that one also. Of particular importance among these tapes seems to be the 400-something, easily more than half the tapes of this killer's home movies are dedicated to. Someone that the killer has abducted in the decade prior named Cheryl Dempsey. The tapes about Cheryl not only include bits about how the killer's obsession with her grew, they also unfortunately contain what the killer did to her throughout that decade. As for the rest of the home movie collection, they range from things that are seemingly kind of innocuous and in no way serial killer-like, to some of the more horrific home movies that you are going to see. In that regard, it is possible to separate the subject of the Poughkeepsie tapes into two groups, Cheryl Damsey and everybody else. In the everybody else column, you are treated to small excerpts of this killer's exploits, which do include some very disturbing and very graphic and suitably lo-fi scenes of his kills. Now, right then and there, Poughkeepsie Tapes manages to excel in being the mockumentary that it is, in that it is shot so well and fit the format so beautifully that you tend to forget that you are not watching an actual documentary about an actual serial killer. This is also owed to the fact that the Poughkeepsie Tapes is an extremely realistic look at how a super genius level serial killer someone like Dexter, for instance, might operate in the real world. It is presented in such a fashion, both the tapes themselves and the documentary of law enforcement trying to catch this guy, that it is really easy to actually believe that this might have been a real case. And if you know anything about serial killers, you will find that the killer in the Poughkeepsie tapes fits the profile of one to a T, except for one crucial aspect, which is the main reason why he hasn't been caught. It is that he's able to switch up his modus operandi, which is the one thing that makes him extremely dangerous and extremely difficult to catch. The movie manages to treat you to two different aspects of horror all at once. On one hand, you are treated to the mounting desperation and frustration of law enforcement in their inability to catch this guy as bodies keep piling up. And on the other, the content of the tapes themselves are extremely disturbing and they really pound home the reality of the urgency of catching him. Like, for instance, in one tape, the serial killer hires a prostitute, gives her a bunch of balloons, and asks her to bounce on them like they were space hoppers, and pop them. Now, from the outset, this plays out like some weird trick asking for some weird request from a prostitute that he paid for. But the moment that she fails to pop a balloon on the first go, the killer's frustration and anger starts to bubble to the surface and suddenly the seemingly innocent sexual exploit becomes sinister. In another completely out of the blue segment, two Girl Scouts come to the killer's door trying to sell him cookies. I'm not gonna tell you what happens, I'm just gonna say it has to be one of the creepiest things I have ever watched. Now that was the killer's general exploits and law enforcement's increasing frustration and in trying to catch him. What about the tapes that are about Cheryl Dempsey? Now, there, the true monster behind the Poughkeepsie tapes begins to shine. Like, real talk, the Poughkeepsie tapes is basically a movie about a sick fuck that is about sick and of a fuck as you can get. It is meant to be consumed by people who enjoy watching sick fuck shit, like myself. It is meant to be enjoyed, I guess, primarily by people who watch horror movies, thrillers, psychological thrillers, torture porn movies, or just 
general sick fuck shit. And this is never clearer than in the parts of the movie that are explicitly about Cheryl Damsey. Because you not only see how the killer got obsessed with her, you also get to see how he managed to abduct her and you are treated to a whole plethora of ways in which the killer continued to torture this girl for the better part of a decade. Intercut with segments about law enforcement being on the trail of this guy and a couple instances where they actually come pretty close but miss him by like this much, it becomes increasingly an exercise in experiencing not only their frustration, but Cheryl's situation as well. In that the movie manages to induce this sort of inescapable sense of despair in the viewer, both by the fact that time continues to move forward and bodies continue to pile up, and by the fact that the severity of the torture inflicted on Cheryl keeps on increasing throughout the movie. The sheer amount of psychotic, almost boundless, limitless sadism brought forward by the killer, who, by the way, is never identified by name, never seen on camera, well, except for that one segment, is enough to make anyone even the strongest of you, and I am behind that statement 100%, sick to your stomach. Because not only are you aware of the fact that the victims you see on the tapes are long dead in that there is no helping them now, mainly because you are told that the tapes were recovered long after the fact, you also see the ways in which the killer toys with his victims before he kills them. So in many ways, the psychological terror visited upon his victims is significantly worse than the physical one, which is both what makes the movie so awesome and what makes it so horrific. What helps Poughkeepsie tapes hit even harder is the fact that the killer's tapes, in terms of its visuals, are pretty much true to their supposed VHS format. This is not the kind of found footage movie where you are treated to a supposed VHS cassette that somehow manages to deliver crystal clear HD video without any skips, especially with regards to the damage that the tape might have sustained over time, the wear and tear. The contents of the tapes are suitable lo-fi with enough snow and on-screen static to convince you that these are, after all, VHSs. The sound coming through seems to have been filmed with an actual camera in that any kind of extremely loud and shrill screaming sends static through the microphone and therefore into your ears. And this is going to happen quite often because after all, about half this movie is about the sick fuck torturing a woman to the limits of sanity and beyond. In terms of its presentation, the Poughkeepsie tapes is perhaps the perfect mockumentary mainly because it not only emulates the style, it manages to integrate it into storytelling in such a way that transcends basic documentary format. The way that it manages to convince the viewer that this is an actual thing that happened, despite the fact that you go into this knowing that this is entirely a work of fiction, is nothing short of astounding. It manages to pull together different elements particularly well to construct a whole in that the event, the investigation that you are witnessing witnessing could easily have been completely real, something that might have even happened if you were living near Poughkeepsie. I mean, if they were all to be shown this, I can easily see residents of Poughkeepsie, New York, looking over their shoulders or just looking at their neighbors funny, wondering if they are serial killers or not. And given that mockumentary movies are pretty much based on trying to capture that all immersive, sort of unrestrained, supposed realism of actual documentaries, I think hats should come off to the Poughkeepsie tapes for actually managing to do this. It also helps that the movie does not really have any known or I should say well-known actors. It really helps with the whole anonymous law enforcement officer that you've never seen before and will probably never seen again air, as opposed to something like say the Atticus Institute in which you could recognize some of the actors which sort of 
broke the supposed realism that it was trying to induce. So in terms of the thrills, the horror, the psychological aspects, the amount of realism that they are able to induce and to maintain, the Poughkeepsie Tapes stands as one of the best documentary style horror movies I have seen. The only warning that it comes with is that the content is extremely disturbing. Now this may sound like a dubious disclaimer because I am here recommending that you actually watch this movie. You know how in those true crime pieces there's always a disclaimer in the beginning that goes viewer discretion advised? Well, viewer discretion very fucking advised in terms of the Poughkeepsie tapes. It's not only the psychological horror, there is quite a bit of on-screen violence presented in ways that make me wonder how in hell they managed to make it look so realistic because there is no CGI in this movie. Everything that has been done has been done through practical effects, meaning that whatever you see on screen in terms of real violence is extremely realistic and extremely visceral to the point where I almost looked away once or twice. And just to elaborate on that, I am not the squeamish type. I don't look away easily, but in this instance, I did. So really, if you want the type of movie where at the end your jaw will be sore from clenching your teeth, or the type of movie where a loved one or a would-be girlfriend will be close enough to you or you to her by the end, I would say go watch the Poughkeepsie tapes. So all in all, yes, I do recommend that you watch this movie, but I think whether or not you will actually enjoy this boils down to one thing. Do you like this kind of stuff? If the answer is yes in any way, if you like horror movies, if you like true crime, if you're into serial killers, if you like psychological horror, if you like found footage as a genre, then you should definitely watch the Poughkeepsie tapes. Just saying, you're not gonna walk away unscathed from it. For now though, having relived watching that movie, I think I'm gonna treat myself to some eye bleach. Until next time, this is Eason. Peace out.